Hello my world of enlightened views. So today I have come back for the second book of the series from the remembrance of the earth's past by Shishin Liu. So here I have the book with me, The Dark Forest, right? The three body problem stops at the first dramatic climax that the book comes at, right? I mean, there are very smaller climaxes all through the book, but that was the grand climax at which the book stopped. So here we have the earth, here we have the Trisolaran civilization who is on the way to reach earth and take it over. So earth basically has 400 years within which it has to defend itself, do whatever, run away from the earth to find some other planet and all, whatever it needs to be done for humans to survive, for the earth's beings to survive, they had 400 years. So that's when the crisis starts at the end of the book and that's where the second book also starts from. Right? Just think about the situation humanity was facing. Right? The bullet has already been fired. Trisolaris is here. Right? The entire civilization has already started from Trisolaris. Whenever I start to explain the book, now, even before I was making this video, I was thinking in my own mind how to structure the story out. But I would just get lost into the smaller stories which are grand in their own realms. Right? So yeah, Trisolar answer coming 400 years is the time that Earth has to defend itself. And like I said towards the end of the last book, a lot of documents and materials were available from the captured ship that we got, right? So what scientists would do is they tried to get into the conversation details that the ETU was having with the Trisolarans. So some small details they got to know that Trisolarans are incapable of <laughs> lying. <laughs> so there is again a funny story that you will come to know at the end of the book. So they cannot lie. So they don't talk like normal humans. So we have to speak and then someone can hear us, right? So he has to be either physically present in front of me or maybe through a communication device like a phone or internet or anything else which is used to communicate my voice or my thoughts I mean written down somewhere that can be communicated to the other person but for trisolarans they don't communicate the way humans do they don't speak so they have this mental link that each trisolarans are capable of and so they would not even need to speak out at all so if a trisolaran passes by another one the other would just understand if he had to say anything he would just get to know and he would respond accordingly, right? And they were actually taken aback by one of the most fundamental and... Uh, in a way, this is something that has helped civilization reach this far and this is also the reason why civilization suffer even now on Earth, the different micro-civilizations that are existing, right? So, this is the ability to lie. So, humans were the ones who has this ability to lie. So Trisolarans, however much they tried, they couldn't know what the humans were thinking. So this concept will be taken up and used in a lot of places in the second book. So using this fundamental knowledge that they are not able to decipher what the human mind is thinking, the United Nations of that time, I think Planetary Defense Council is something that was created. So they started the Wall Facer project. So now, now what this wall facer means is that there would be people, four in number, so they would be selected from different verticals of life, different, uh, but these have to be uh, people from technical or military background who are well known to strategize, right? So these would be people, these four people, they can strategize as per their will, they never would need to disclose what they were doing and basically they would be given a free hand in terms of what they could do they were given a free hand in terms of the monetary budget whatever they needed the entire world would come up to provide that person with that help the only baseline is they would be knowing that the person is strategizing to save the earth so there should be absolute belief in this wall facer I mean, that is also again, the author has put up some limitations. 
because nothing is absolute so all these asks have to be in the it, it to some extent have to be realistic right so now out of these four two were from a military background military or political background and uh, uh, so they had they started working on their own theory on how to save earth the third person i think his name was heinz so he was a doctor and uh, his specialization was i think psychology or psychiatry so he would strategize his own plans and then comes luo ji who is like the protagonist of this plot right so now luo ji's background is also shown he uh, was he is a physicist but then not someone who is very successful he has had uh, affairs in life but at the same time he has not got true love this is some uh, just the normal bullshit that every <laughs> every male <laughs> goes through in life right so that's what his background has been portrayed as and he survived a car crash in which his girlfriend at at that point of time whoever his girlfriend was she died in that crash and he survived and then he was picked up by dashi i mean i would not go to the background of dashi anyway he was a police cop who was there in the first book also a no nonsense police cop he picks him up and then takes him to uh, again the planetary defense council the entire journey is shown and all right so there he finally comes to know that he is the fourth wall facer so yeah and he never got to know actually in the second book why he was chosen even i am not pretty clear why he was chosen uh, somewhere it was explained that uh, it was an order that came from the tri trisolarans uh they specifically wanted him dead so instead of his girlfriend who died in that accident it was him who was the target and because he got saved and the pdc got to know that's why he they picked him up and made him into a wall facer so that's how the first stage of the books book completes at the same time humanity is aware that so forms are well aware of everything that is going on around and in the world right and they are also on the way <laughs> so they are also on the way some i don't know how many years had passed right that's where the first step of the movie stops <laughs> i would call it a movie because that's what is running in my mind now then these wall facers started strategizing on their own plans at the same time look at these nuances of humanity and life as a whole that shishin lu keeps on bringing up so the earth comes to know that the trisolarians through the eto have appointed four wall breakers right so these are members these are humans only from eto who are dedicated to uh, to trisolarians uh, the only task that they were given was to expose the plan that the wall facer was building up right so they didn't need to do anything they didn't need to kill anyone they didn't need to do anything at all just observe each wall facer and then come up with what the plan the other one was coming up with right so that's how it went so the first wall facer he was a military general i think uh fitzroy or someone who served in vietnam so his plan was simple he would he the plan that he showed actually in uh, front of the world was he was building some sort of defense in the outer edges of the solar system which would then attack the trisolar and fleet and then uh, it would basically stop the invasion the second one was someone i think named ray diaz so he was a he was the president of venezuela i think i can see uh, in chinese uh, novels the people are from the countries which would usually not come up in the american ones or western ones and the chinese are extremely neutral at the way they are portraying this uh, these individuals also so he was an a despotic autocratic ruler of venezuela he was the second world breaker and again his plan was also very similar he would i think he was setting up some thousands and thousands of nuclear bombs he would place them around the sun or i think uh, around the sun and then the same would be used to attack the trisolarians and defeat them so this this was the surface level plan that they had 
given and because humanity couldn't question the wall breakers they were given all support all financials everything to get the projects completed and they were not needed to explain how this would help in winning over the trisolarans so that's how things were progressing now the first wall facer basically came up with a with the final strategy of the first general that he would use these bombs to to in in some way to basically uh, threaten earth that earth will somehow be destroyed and the trisolarans even if they come they would find a dead planet there would be nothing left for them and so they better not attack us right the third uh, the second uh, radius was the second venezuelan person <coughs> so the his theory was also pretty similar i think he would have bombed up mercury which would have again caused a catastrophic chain of reactions in the solar system and then again would have ultimately led to the destruction of earth these theories were again published by the wall facers and yeah <laughs> so there are two things that happened first is the trisolarans got to know about the plans right the second thing is humans also got to know about the final plans and there was again just like usual human behavior again a fight among various groups in human society that how can we be so immoral how can we hold the earth as a ransom <laughs> to save earth itself right you have to ethical you have to be ethical even when you are facing existential crisis <laughs> i mean it's pretty lame the current russia ukraine crisis also is going towards the same route right uh, morality where it starts where it stops what is moral what is not moral nothing matters again uh, i'll get into some videos regarding my thoughts about everything that's going on around in the world i would pick up a particular topic and then we'll try to go where the topic leads to right so that will come up as some video series in future so yeah both of them discarded completely by the human race because we have to be moral winners right so their plans were discarded but a lot of investment had already happened in creation of this nuclear bombs and also they those are already in place to some extent the third wall breaker he releases the plan of this person who was working towards psychologically treating humans right so the plan that was exposed by the wall breaker was this wall facer would basically find out ways to manipulate human minds into thinking that they can win they can win in this conflict over the trisolarans they have to progress they have to develop scientific methods to come up with new weapons new defense system which will help them survive so this this conditioning this i think some term was used in the book which is in a way conditioning of the human mind so the people who would be conditioned they would basically be absolute believers that humanity would be able to overcome this crisis they would be able to devise some strategies to survive so look at this thing also right again the morality of humanity comes into action right this woke people would always say that you always have the absolutely moral ground whenever faced with any adverse situation that is not the case right you should you always have to win just like the ukrainians are being portrayed in western media that if you fight you will win if you fight you will win you are ignoring the blatant risk that you are going to put yourself in you are ignoring the fact that the entire civilization can go in the matter of a click if you are not capable enough to understand what your enemy is so yeah that was his plan uh, mental conditioning and the same again was exposed by the wall breaker so the three plans did now coming to the fourth wall facer right so <coughs> he again was completely taken aback by the fact that he was chosen as a wall facer after pondering for some time he start so he was again a dreaming person like me <laughs> so he had these dreams about finding the perfect love finding the perfect 
place to live beside a mountain beside a lake beside a waterfall he think imagines those kind of places in his mind he asks for him to be pet put up in a place like that with a woman like the one he imagined <laughs> and to be honest the entire world start gets started together to get him whatever he has asked for see he gets to stay in a place like this he is put he has put up in a mansion like that in a serene uh, location he also was sent the woman of his dreams so he starts spending his life in complete luxury in complete uh, he just cut himself outside from the rest of the world and start in, started enjoying his life he had a kid also in between and the irony is the entire world was supporting him to do this just thinking that he has some strategy in mind right although the entire world was also uh, starting to observe that nothing is happening time is just passing and he's just spending more and more time but they were not able to do anything because this is the wall facer project right so that's where the story has moved to now this wall breaker who was who had come to uh, to expose this wall breakers plan wall faces plan it's left with no answer so he doesn't know what this person is doing so for the trisolar as luoji is becoming an even more uh, bigger threat because he was not being able i mean no one was able to know what he was thinking and he was becoming more and more philosophical with in in, in this entire 4 5 years that he spends in that mansion right that's how things were progressing so finally the pdc had to take a step had to push him to do something so what they did was they picked up his wife and his uh child and daughter and they have they put them into hibernation so yeah there is one thing that i missed mentioning uh, till this point so human uh, science had developed to such extent that they were not now able to hibernate human bodies so you, i would be put up in some solution in a cubicle and then i would be put up into hibernation for tens of hundreds of years right and then i can be woken up at any point of time so hibernation technology was available and pretty common at that point of time so his wife and child were kidnapped kidnapped by the pdc and <laughs> pdc is the united nation by the way they were kidnapped and then he was threatened that he has to come up with some thing to help the world otherwise his wife and children would be has been put up into hibernation and they would be woken up only after something has come up right so that's where the world starts i mean that's where the story has moved to till now three of the wall facers were exposed the fourth wall facers plan was there was no plan at all and the trisolarans were advancing now something need, needed to be done now luoji whose wife has wife and child has just been taken now kidnapped he started becoming more and more philosophical see he went to the lake on a dark night and he starts thinking about wild imaginations so and one imagination that finally hit his brain at that point of time was that if the trisolarans are attacking us why is our mind so confined that they are the most technologically advanced civilization there are no other civilizations apart from them because they are not that technologically advanced right they are needing 5 400 years to reach earth we have 400 years to prepare ourselves so and this thing hit his mind that we see numerous stars in the universe we see numerous evidences of things that are supposedly out there in the universe but because we have not been able to find them we are finding it hard to believe so it hits his mind that no trisolarans are not the only ones out there in the universe there would be uncountable other civilizations available in this infinite universe and yes the universe is a dark forest we are not able to find anyone because no one wants them to be found we are immature we don't know how things will become if we are discovered we don't know we have this we are still in this moral woke dilemma of being nice 
we are being naive. We were aware of the dark forest theory. There are two axioms of dark forest theory and uh, two chains of reactions of based on these dark forest theory, right? This was somewhere discussed in the book. I actually forgot where in the book it was discussed, right? So these are called the, called the axioms of universal civilizations. So it's either somewhere in this book or somewhere in the third book. So the first axiom is survival is the first task, first priority for any civilization, right? The first priority for any civilization is survival. Second, to survive, a civilization always has to grow. Why? Because resources are limited. So if you want your, your civilization to survive and your resources in your own planet is limited, you will have to grow. You will have to look for other places for the well-being of your civilization. Right? These are the two axioms. Now, the resultant of doing these two axioms are pretty hilarious. So the first one is, because you have to survive and you have to grow, you will start searching for other planets. Now, when you find other planets, what are the two things, two or three things that can happen? The first is, they would be accommodating of our, of, I mean, let's say I am human civilization, I am trying to find an, another place for humans to survive, right? So these other civilization, they can accommodate us, they can fight with us, right? These are the two options available. Now let's say uh, they are accommodating us right now. We move to that planet, we start living. But because of the second axiom that resource is always limited, so there will be limitations for both your species as well as the other civilization species, right? So now for the well-being of my own species, I have to do something that will be detrimental to the other one. Same goes for the other civilization also. So I will start developing my science, my technology, everything in a way by which I would be able to dominate more. So this is called the chain of suspicion. So I am, I will never be able to be sure that the other civilization is not planning anything that will be adversarial for my own species because that is not possible. That's a practical reality. Resources are limited, right? So that is called a chain of suspicion. Now the final outcome is technological innovation. So yeah, at this point of time, let's say I am Earth, I am a far superior civilization, I move to a backward civilization and I start living there and living there together, right? I am technologically superior. So I consider they would never be able to fight against me. But this is contradictory to one of the most fundamental things about our scientific knowledge. So a lot of things happen because of technological explosions, right? What is technological explosion? That means, for example, take internet for an example. The discovery of internet was done to help with the with the experiments that were being done at the uh, I think Large Hadron Collider, right? At CERN. Sorry, LHC was not there at that point of time. So there was huge data that was coming out, and it could not be stored at one location, so it had to be spread out. So that's how internet came into being, and look at its implication now, right? So technological explosion happened. So this underdeveloped civilization might also go through this technological explosion and you never know when they would be say, equally or more powerful than you and would finally overtake you. So for trisolarians also who were 400 kilometers, uh, 400 light years away from Earth, they were also aware of these four uh, things, right? These four axioms. So they could never trust us that we would be a friendly and accommodative civilization. So basically, the summary of the theory is, if a well-advanced civilization finds out that there is a less advanced civilization out there, less advanced because if someone is spreading some message in the universe, he is a stupid and less advanced one, right? The first action would be to just annihilate it and not take up any risk at all. 
So yeah, that is the dark forest theory and these are the axioms of the dark forest theory. <laughs> so Luo Ji was the one who came up with this theory. Right. But how does he validate his theory? He needs to validate it. So that is when the first step of him being a wall facer actually comes up. So he was, again, his family was kidnapped. He was being taken back to the PDC council meeting. And there he, he didn't explain this theory, but he only said that this is XYZ is a coordinate of a solar system, which is far away from the sun. He spreads these coordinates again using the same I think sun as the beamer uh, to spread this coordinate into the universe. So now he has been put into hibernation. The wall facer project is completely scrapped. Now humanity started working on the basic, uh, basic normal courses of action like they were planning to create uh, spaceships, then different large spaceships which will help humans to uh, move away from the earth to to other to outer space and all. But there were lots of other human uh, traits that were touched upon in the book. For example, uh, escapism became one of the uh, theories of human civilization survival that came out. For example, people knew that everyone in the earth would not be able to escape from earth, but then some would be able to do, right? Now, because some would be able to do, the ones who would be left behind, I mean, they can understand for one generation, two generation, but there is like 400 years, right? Why would I want my child uh, to stay back and die on earth while someone would be able to escape, right? So there were various conflicts that started across countries. For example, if a rich country is there and the poorer country countries knows that he will be, that that country will be able to exist, it will definitely not be a good world to live in, right? So there would be various revolts, wars that were spreading across the world, famines started, the world's population I think shrank by a significant uh, percentage, like 50% or so, I think 3 billion was the count that I remembered, right? But again, uh, this also shows one thing that human memory doesn't remember things for very long, even if it's a very devastating situation. So after these famines and uh, the warring period stopped, humanity again started developing. They again started the scientific discoveries, things started to improve, right? I mean, it's for, I mean one, even if you consider 100 years has passed, 300 more years are left, 300 or 200 more years are left, right? We, forgot, we have forgotten most of the things that happened in World War II, right? Who were the heroes or who were the villains, that even that part we have forgotten. So over this 100 years or so, humanity basically forgot that there was this big threat that was coming. There were lots of pacifiers that have come up. I mean, there were regular interactions that was happening between humans and the trisolarans through the sophons. And trisolarans, they also, uh, I mean, you can connect the dot because I have ex already explained the uh, theory of uh, dark forest. But they also started becoming more and more friendly and accommodating. They were allowing science to progress and all. So sprawling human cities started uh, developing. So, I mean, people even started creating underground cities where most majority of the population moved to. Now on surface, because surface has become a lot polluted and all, there was a minor fraction of the population, the poorer fraction of the population that was living on the surface, right? And uh, so that's how the Earth was progressing. Various starships were being built, huge star fleets were being formed, huge armies in space, in star ships, uh, capable of fighting the Trisolarans. It was, I mean, humanity started to believe that they were, they would be able to inhibit the, and destroy the Trisolarans, or they would at least be able to make some kind of peace arrangement with the Trisolarans. <laughs> so <laughs> that's what was happening. And, and people were becoming more and more confident and that they are able to, they are capable enough to fight the trisolarans. So, and uh, when Luoji woke up, he was actually surprised. So he was, he was uh, in an underground facility, I think, right? Underground facility. So most of the cities had moved to the underground facilities. So he saw that the, everything around him were basically displaced. So information was propping up 
wherever he looked at, be it a wall, be it his bed, be it the floor, be it the ceiling, everywhere, everything. <laughs> I mean, Shishindu was basically mocking at us for the silly things that we are, uh, we are hyped, so hyped about, right? <laughs> Let me laugh at it for some time. There are some moments in the book that are so hilarious and that would show human nature in a way that you just have to laugh. <laughs> so yeah, he could see just displays all around. Anyway, he asked for his transfer to uh, to the to the surface. So he went to surface. He found out uh, that Beijing has been completely dusted. <laughs> no one lives in Beijing. In the outskirt, there was one small village where some people were living. They were again, uh, uh, what to say? They were nostalgic people and all who would want to stay in the old times. So they would even cultivate. They had agricultural produce and all. So he started living there. Right. So that's how the world was uh, progressing. Then, uh, so that's how where the third part of the story I think comes to an end. Now comes the fourth part. So, humans had created multiple radars across the world. Right? There were radars across the world who, would, who were able to detect and check how the tri trisolar and fleet was uh, uh, was moving through space. So at some point it noticed that the trail had, uh, I mean that the movement had become more faster and at one point it was noticed that a small tiny object had started flowing towards the earth at a much faster speed and was supposed to reach earth in if, in some 20, 30 or 40 years, whatever the time was. Luoji was also there, so again, he was a, uh, okay, okay, I missed one big part, so why he was taken out of hibernation? So I think 50 years after he was put up into hibernation, human society had developed. The star that he had sent out the coordinates of into the entire universe, that had literally exploded. <laughs> so it was out of curiosity that he was brought up, then that what was the reason? What had he done? What spell had he cast on the star? So he came up. And he, uh, he was, I think he, uh, he might have explained or might not have explained. Again, because I mean there was some merit in how things have happened. So there was a fraction of the PDC and even uh, the normal population who believed that something or the other would have worked. He knew something or the other. So again, he was reinstated into the Wallfacer project. He had been given, uh, he was again given free way to some extent, not as much as he was given in the first time around, right? to work on how to defend it. So he started by working off with the nuclear bombs that the first general, uh, the first wall facer had uh, already created. He started putting them up at different locations around uh, the outer edges of the solar system around Pluto and all. He was, he explained in a way that he was trying to help create defense for Earth against the Trisolarans. So that's how uh, he started working and all. And people again, people by that time had forgotten that there was any threat at all. So although he was working, he was not having any respect at all in the in the society. People were literally hating him. That uh, uh, I mean, even if a star had got destroyed because of his act, so some fraction of the people hated him because he has got destruction of some other civilization. Then some part of the society thought that he has squandered so much money and all, uh, and then he is again putting up bombs to stop the trisolar and who by the time had become humanity's closest friends. Right? So this is not right at all. So he was not liked at all. So he started living in that small village. He started living in a small house and all. That's how time was passing. Now sometime back I mentioned that one particular vessel from the trisolar and feet started moving much faster. So it was supposed to meet Earth. I mean, right now was the time when that uh, object was to enter the solar system. So now a debate started in the PDC, and it was not the PDC then, it was some star fleet association. So there were uh, fleets from Earth, there were fleets from some star, star fleets and all, because a large number of people had also moved uh, to the solar system and started living there permanently. Some other bases were formed in Moon and Mars, etc. etc. I mean, humanity had progressed, right? So there started a fight amongst the, all the different fractions in this uh, grand body who would be the first one to intercept 
this vessel and who would be the first one to interact with a foreign civilization because this was a good big deal right so whoever whichever fleet that person belonged to would become would would, would gain much more respect and much more boost to their own ego in front of the other uh, const other uh, constituent of this starfleet organization right so no again just as usual there could never be any uh, consensus amongst humans so a compromise was reached that there were something somewhere around 2000 starships that the world had created right all the 2000 <laughs> would go together to meet this uh, tiny uh, spaceship from trisolaris and all were stacked extremely close together. I mean, in a, in a normal situation, this would never have happened. I think one starship was like 220 kilometers away from the second one. And it was a rectangular formation uh, in, in 3D so that the, the distance was the minimum distance possible between that space, uh, the trisolar and ship to the all the ships from uh, Starfleet, right? So that no one can uh, have an upper hand. And uh, so there was one character called Dingy who was, uh, because I didn't go through the, his, his details, his background is also there. He was a scientist again, and there would be family connections with him to the other characters that I discussed in this story and the previous one. So he was a neutral person and he was chosen as the representative to meet uh, the Tricellar and ship. So the Tricellar and ship, when it came closer, it, see, it I mean, it was described in such a magnificent manner in the book, it was basically a perfect droplet-shaped object, tiny droplet, right? And there was basically no blemish, not a spot of irregularity in that spaceship. So humans uh, led by dinghy and there were uh, one or two other commander, they moved towards the spaceship. It didn't do anything. They touched it. It didn't do anything, it didn't move at all. Then one of the spaceship's hangar opened, our spaceship, I mean, that's one of the Starfleet's spaceship's hangar opened, and they simply absorbed this droplet inside that spaceship. Right? The spaceship was inside, it was not doing anything at all, and it was perfectly shaped, as if there was not even, uh, I mean, it was made of a completely different material. It was not the solid material that we know on Earth made of neutrons, protons, electrons and all. It was a made of uh, materials under strong uh, strong force, so which is again one of the four fundamental forces. I will not get into that detail. So there is a strong nuclear force, that is the strongest force that is possible between uh, any fundamental particle. right? And because it was made of strong force, there is nothing present in the universe. I would not say universe present with humanity that would be able to break it. Dinghy, as soon as he realized this, he knew that things were not right. I think he mentioned uh, some word, I mean, if I were to destroy you, what issue is it to you? Completely forgotten what the statement was. But just as soon as he said that, the droplet literally moved so fast I mean, some it was around I think, 30 kilometers per second, or it moved so fast that it was basically untraceable. A second later, the starship in which it was in completely burst into flames, and soon, within a fraction of a few seconds, one after another, all the starships that were lined in this rectangular fashion started bursting up. The central command for starship uh, starships couldn't even realize what was happening. Some theory said that our own starship started attacking another one. Some said some accident would have happened because the starship was so close by. It was almost like when 50% or 1000 or so starships that had been destroyed by the time they realized that it was this droplet that was causing this thing. Just think about humanity. All these messages were taking some time, I think 10 minutes or I don't know what the time frame was to reach Earth, right? So it was taking time to reach it and people were realizing, by the time they were realizing, almost the entire starship was, uh, fleet was gone. <laughs> Just think about what would have been going through the leaders of Earth at that point of time. 
so you were considering it as a peace offering mm-hmm. and you had basically forgotten the kind of threat you were in right and your entire defense was destroyed in a matter of seconds <laughs> let me laugh at it for some time so yeah uh, when this destruction was going on around all the fleet there was some fleet at the outer edge there were some commanders again his uh, history of, of those commanders were also given why they their thought process was a bit different from the other ones so they did they realize that some odd thing was going to happen so those ship and a 4 5 or few other ships around its vicinity that commander basically gave a direction that they have to move as far away and as fast as possible from this attack as soon as possible because if once the attack started there would be no time to escape some scientific explanations were also given why why it was so difficult to escape because all the star fleets were not under hibernation so only during hibernation this fast movements could be done right so most of the ships couldn't do anything but these few ships escaped and again uh, after they saw the destruction and after they have moved far enough they realized that they could not come back to earth so they thought about starting their own uh, universal civilization of humans they considered themselves as the uh, started considering themselves as the only uh, saviors of humanity so they escaped again some other stupid things were also discovered that out of five ships on they knew that rations were good enough for only two to survive so again they started some infighting so three of the sh- other uh, of the of these five ships were also again destroyed by the other <laughs> two ships so there's a literal mockery of human thought process is being done right that is what being oak does <laughs> that is what being oak does anyway so yeah the entire fleet is destroyed earth has been brought to what they deserve i mean some cynical people luoji luoji was not a cynical person he would not go into this kind of discussion but again people only would have started commenting that you got what you deserve right so anyway the entire fleet is discovered is destroyed the government started frantically searching for luoji who by that time was literally hated by the entire woke community of the world and luo ji after he sees everything happening around in the world he takes out his car he starts driving he reaches he i think moves outside of the city he goes to the old graveyard i think he goes to the graveyard of i'm not sure i forgot it was ye one ji or his wife and kid anyway so he just sat down at the grave and he said one thing it's not one thing i am just trying to be dramatic he said that he knows that he is being followed he knows that the triceratops are observing him if you are seeing me respond so for literally ask luo ji and why did it take so much time for humanity to discover this thing it understood the threat that luo ji possessed and that is when the triceratops actually came to a truth so that is where the story abruptly stops and that is where you are left lost like a drug addict where do you get the next bit of information from and the story is only going to get more grander after this end there is a very strange excerpt of a completely different story completely unrelatable where an inv- invasion of istanbul is going on from the turkic forces i mean it's called the fall of constantinople how the king was trying to defend constantinople who, i mean which was Istanbul's name at that point of time the Roman Empire Eastern Roman Empire was trying to survive there and how the king had basically discovered that there was a witch in town so what this witch could do was basically uh, steal anything she wanted to which also meant she could do anything she wanted to the king would have anyway not believed in this story but because his most general was advocating for this story 
he believed uh, the story of the witch she was brought to the king's place and she was given the task to king the turkish sultan right so that's why the book finally ends the story ends before that but the book ends with this unique story coming up the book does teach one thing for sure the insignificance of our <laughs> petty issues that's going on around in the world right first in the first book showed the insignificance that we are nothing even in front of the nearest star that's flying out there right the second book literally shows that nothing in the universe is significant <laughs> i mean even the invader who was being the existential threat just a few moments before is itself under existential threat the universe is a dark forest there are killers out there all around if we want to survive <laughs> we we have to find ways to hide ourselves just like a deer running from a lion and we are stupid enough to keep on making more noise so that people just not people so that aliens just hear us and <laughs> obliterate us so <laughs> that's how significant humanity is and that is not even half of the grandeur of this book everything that has been made to feel insignificant in this book <laughs> will not even be considered as things to ponder in the next book right so the grandeur of the universe created by shishin liu will keep on increasing in the next book stay tuned